This episode of Hoochos is brought to you by Hydroland. Welcome back to Hoochos. Today on Hoochos, I'm going to show you how to set up a hydroponic system for root vegetables. We're going to be planting beetroot, carrot, and onion. In this video, I'm going to show you a completely hands-off technique that also is extremely aesthetically pleasing. This one's for those of you who can't convince your partners to have a hydroponic system. <laughs> Let's get to setting up the system. Okay, so to start with, these are the planters that we'll be using today. They are large plastic bowls. They're about 30 centimeters high, which is the perfect wicking height, and they're nice and wide. They're gonna be really good for growing large amounts of stuff without using too much volume, like grow media. So what we're gonna do is just take something that you can standardize the distance between the holes that we're about to make for the wicking fabric. For wicking fabric, this is essentially what it is. It's just wicking mat. But if you don't have wicking fabric, you can just use like a cotton towel, because towels wick. Uh, anything that wicks, uh, whatever you like. Uh, I'm just gonna use this wicking material because it's gonna give me the largest surface area that I can possibly get. We're gonna make an incision in our plastic. <laughs> And that's given us two holes at the base. And now I'm just gonna cut some of this wicking fabric to size, like so. And we can just feed it through the holes in our base, like so. And now that our bases are all wicked up, we can fill them up with grow media. So the grow media that I'm using today is a 7030 cocoa perlite. It's gonna give me a really good wicking material and the cocoa holds on to nutrient because it has a high cation exchange capacity. Okay, so all the parts I'm about to use to set up this rain gutter grow system are available on the Hydroland website, the Hydroland Amazon, as well as my Patreon. Or if you don't wanna use any of those techniques for making a rain gutter grow system, you can also use the reimagining the rain gutter grow system technique where you heat and bend the PVC pipe so that you can set this rain gutter grow system up for the cheapest possible outlay. Links in the description for those parts. What you'll need, a PVC cement. Now I'd recommend going with the clear cement. Uh, this is really cheap. You can get it from your local hardware store, Lowe's, Bunnings, Home Depot. I think this was six bucks for that whole thing. You will never go through that. So what do I do with it? Because I hate the brush that's inside it. I get an old HDPE, uh, make sure it's HDPE, high density polyurethane, squeezy bottle. This is a interior wood glue originally, but now it has the PVC glue in it. That means that the PVC glue is not going to react with the bottle itself. Uh, you can tell it's HDPE because on the bottom, it'll have a little two symbol with a HDPE or just the two symbols enough to know. What that allows you to do is just squeeze it out onto the surface that you want to stick to each other. And because PETG is actually very soluble, it's actually the most soluble you can get for this glue and PVC is also extremely soluble. To start with, we're actually just gonna mark out where our float is because we're gonna cut it. Um, you don't need anything special, no special tools. Scissors, uh, this is a sheet metal cutter if you've got access to those or every gardener has access to secateurs. Slide our end cap on, take our float cover. Now, if you don't have a float cover yet, place the float in the area that it is. What that's gonna do is, it's gonna give us a, an idea of where the float's going to sit in the system. And from here, we can just mark out around the float. I, I like to mark just inside of it because I know that's where I wanna cut. And we can just use a ruler to join the dots. There is the, what we're cutting out, right? Start with very basic tools. We can just cut the PVC. No power tools required. Easy? Yeah. Secateurs work as well. Just cut like so. Probably wouldn't recommend these, but if you're a gardener, you've already got them. I'd say these 
metal snips are gonna just be the easiest. Yeah, these are just, these are real cheap at the hardware store. They just give you a bunch more leverage because they're built for this kind of application and, and steel is, you know, harder than plastic. If you can use these, I'd say, especially if you don't have the greatest grip strength, this is gonna give you the best chance of getting a nice hassle-free hole out, like so. We're just gonna check that our end matches up. Oh, have a go at that. And that's where our float's gonna go in our system. So I'm just gonna remove this part and you can see how it can flex in now. The way that we're gonna stop that from flexing in when we've glued our end is we're gonna take that piece that we've got here now keep this because this is now your template for every gutter you make from now on. And we're gonna take that piece and you just bend it, right? That is going to allow us to make our gutter push outwards. See how it sprung out? And I'm gonna add our PVC glue. Now you do not need much of this stuff. It's gonna bond almost immediately within five minutes. And all you need to do is put a line of the glue where the end of your downpipe is going to touch the PET G, like so. There's not much at all, because we're only trying to bond the end to the back. We slide it on, and it's sprung out already, because we're prepared it that way. It will just glue into place, like so. And we can leave that. That only needs to be left for, you know, 10 minutes. Uh, and then we can remove our piece and keep our piece as a template. And we can also, in the meantime, do the other end. And obviously this side is going to be a piece of cake because you don't have to do any cutting at all. There's actually another option here. I have created a extra piece for this uh, pipe system. This is a joiner. So you can now join multiple channels in a row. This is very useful for minimizing the expense, the outlay of float valves and etc. That just slides on like that if you're going to extend it or we have our end cap. So we just do that line of PVC glue around the inside again, simple as, and it just slides on. And that, that is that. That is our rain gutter grow system. So my plan with this system is I'm actually going to bury it because I don't want it visible. I want it to be hidden because we want this system to look really nice. So I need to drill out holes for where our pots are gonna sit. Uh, and I'm gonna use just a hole saw for that. All we have to do here is measure the distance between the two holes that you slit for the wicks. And then we're gonna put a hole, two holes beneath each pot. So we're looking at about 17 centimeters between each hole. And we'll just mark that out on our rain gutter. 10 centimeters in from the end. There you go, 17. Right there. And then we're gonna go one hole there, one hole there. And now I'm gonna bury the system. And where our pots are gonna go, we just want to support them with as much uh, as we can on each side. Once our pots are in, we can start to fill this back over. And now we can lay our pots over the sections that we want our wick to drop down into. So we just drag our pots and make sure our wick drops down into our, our gutter. Perfect. And you can see our wick coming down the full width of the gutter and full height of the gutter. So that's great. And now we can cover up the pipes in between. And to plumb up the system, we just need a float valve, a 13 millimeter quick connect. We can throw our float valve in our system. 
adjust it and throw on our quick connect and cover. Fortunately for me, I have a an existing reservoir just there and I can connect it up to a, a line that we have here. I'm gonna turn on our reservoir, hopefully. Yep, that is filling up, fantastic. And into these, I'm gonna be planting red onion and some standard onions. I'm just planting them in circles. And I'm really not being shy. <laughs> we'll see how many we get. <clears throat> And I'm just going to cover those over. And now we can watch them grow. Okay, so our beetroot and our onions sprouted really well. Uh, but the one on the end here did not. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to plant it out. I'm going to cheat a little. Uh, we're going to plant it out with roly-poly carrots and some more onion. So this is brown onion. And I just got these from the local Bunnings and I'm not even gonna bother shaking the dirt off. I'm just gonna plant them straight into our uh, wicking bowls. And we have a look at that result. I am actually over the moon with this system. I did actually have the reservoir drain empty a couple of times throughout the grow and it handled that really well. There was enough moisture and nutrient capacity within the bowls to keep the plants supplied with nutrient and water. And we've got a fantastic result. One of my favorite things about this system is the aesthetics and I think it looks absolutely fantastic. You can't even tell that it's a hydroponic system. And on top of that, this is the worst case scenario for hydroponics. Root vegetables are notoriously hard to grow in hydroponics because of the constant water that is supplied to their roots. So I think that this is one of the best case scenarios for root vegetables in a cocoa perlite wicking based system where you have a bunch of space for the vegetables to grow. So let's do a quick harvest and I'll show you what I've got here. So the onions did well, not as well as I would have hoped, but we still have an onion harvest. We'll get to that in a second. The beetroots came through. As you can see, being outside the greenhouse, we have a, a couple of pests here, but they've actually fared really well. And, and we've got some nice beetroots 
formed at the base of our beetroot leaves. I was actually coming along and harvesting the leaves, which is why there's not many leaves here because they're really good for salads. They're basically a edible green leaf lettuce substitute. And here we have the carrots. Now, the carrots did really well on this side and the onions on this side, not so well. We do have a few onions here that have survived. They've not done anywhere near as well as our onions over in our other bed. And I think that's just because they were crowded out by this mass of carrots, which has shaded them because this is the north side of the system. And these carrots just went absolutely crazy as you saw in the time lapse. And look how green that bowl is with all the carrot tops. So let's get to a harvest and see what we've got. I'm gonna pull all of them out, lay them out and show you what we've achieved with this grow. So I should say that the entire duration of this time-lapsed grow was uh, just under three months. So it was started on the 16th of October and it's now the 16th of January. So these are a short carrot that came in the tubs from Bunnings. So we've got, so we've got little bunches of these short carrots, which is really good for this shallow hydroponic system. And as you can see, they're actually quite bunched together. So I'd probably recommend that you separate these out if you're going to plant them like I have. And they're actually quite a nice little snacking size. Pretty bloody good. So I think I've overcrowded these carrots, but the way that they came in those tubs doesn't really make sense. I think most people will get the idea that you meant to plant the whole seedling tray which I don't think is gonna matter whether it's hydro or not. You're just gonna have this crowding effect, which is a bit silly. So in the future, I'll just plant my own seeds rather than um, those seedling trays. Yeah, so we've got a few nicely sized roly-poly carrots. Most of these are a bit undersized though, which is a bit disappointing. Well, there it is. That is my hydroponic root vegetable harvest. We've got onions, beetroot and carrots and while it may not be a massive harvest, it shows that it can be done. And this may be a step on the way to a system that you can design for yourself that will provide a bumper crop in the future. The beauty of this system is now that I've harvested, all I have to do is go and re-sow these seeds, keep that reservoir topped up with nutrient, and I can harvest this again in another three months. There's no extra work to be done. And the only thing you'll need to replace is the cocoa. But this lot of cocoa will definitely last a few harvests before it's anywhere near too depleted to use. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Who Chose. Happy hydroponicking. And I'll see you next time on Who Chose. <laughs> All right. Oh, Bob. <laughs>